Welcome to the Eastern Civ Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. Mencius or Ming Zhi was a Chinese philosopher who is the most famous Confucian after Confucius himself. Mencius, also known by his birth name, Ming Qi or Ming Ko, was born in the state of Zhou, Shangdong province, only 18 miles south of Kufu, Confucius' birthplace. He was an eminent Chinese philosopher and sage, and one of the principal interpreters of Confucianism. Supposedly, he was a pupil of Confucius' grandson, Zhixi. Like Confucius, according to legend, he traveled throughout China for 40 years to offer advice to rulers of war reform. During the Warring States period, 403 to 221 BC, Mencius served as an official and scholar of the Jingxia Academy in the state of Kui. From 319 to 312, disappointed at his failure to effect change in his contemporary world, he retired from public life. Mencius is buried in the Mencius Cemetery, which is located 12 kilometers to the northeast of Jiqing's central urban area. A steel carried by a, a giant stone tortoise and crowned with dragons stands at the front of his grave. Mencius' mother is often held up as an exemplary female figure in Chinese culture. His father died when he was very young, and his mother raised her son alone. They were very poor. At first they lived by a cemetery, where the mother found her son imitating the paid mourners in funeral processions. Therefore the mother decided to move. The next house was near a market in the town. There the boy began to imitate the cries of merchants. Merchants were despised in early China. So the mother moved to a house next to a school. Inspired by the scholars and students, Mencius began to study. His mother decided to remain, and Mencius became a scholar. Another story further illustrates the emphasis that Mencius' mother placed on her son's education. Once, when Mencius was young, he was truant from school. His mother responded to his apparent disregard for education by taking up a pair of scissors and cutting the cloth she had been weaving in front of him. This was intended to illustrate that one cannot stop a task midway and her example inspired Mencius to diligence in his studies. While Confucius himself did not explicitly focus on the subject of human nature, Mencius asserted the innate goodness of the individual, believing that it was society's influence, its lack of positive cultivating influence, that caused bad moral character. Quote, he who exerts his mind to the utmost knows his nature. End quote. And, quote, the way of learning is none other than finding the lost mind, end quote. The four beginnings. To show innate goodness, Mencius used the example of a child falling down a well. Witnesses to the events immediately feel, quote, alarm and distress. Not to gain friendship from the child's parents, nor to seek the praise of their neighbors and friends, nor because they disdain the reputation of lack of humility if they did not rescue the child. The feeling of commiseration is the beginning of humility. The feeling of shame and dislike is the beginning of righteousness. The feeling of deference and compliance is the beginning of propriety. The feeling of right and wrong is the beginning of wisdom. Men have these four beginnings just as they have their four limbs. Having these four beginnings, but saying that they cannot develop them, is to destroy themselves, end quote. Human nature has an innate tendency toward goodness, but moral rightness cannot be instructed down to the last detail. This is why merely external controls always fail to improve society. True improvement results from educational cultivation in favorable environments. Likewise, bad environments tend to corrupt the human will. This, however, is not proof of innate evil because a clear thinking person would avoid causing harm to others. This position of Mencius put him bet between Confucians such as Zhongzhi, who thought people were innately bad, and Taoists who believed humans did not need cultivation. They just needed to accept their innate, natural, and effortless goodness. The four beginnings, or sprouts, could grow and develop, or they could fail. In this way, Mencius synthesized integral parts of Taoism and Confucianism. Individual effort was needed to cultivate oneself, but one's natural tendencies were good to begin with. The object of education is the cultivation of benevolence, otherwise known as Ren.